Ukraine claims to have downed a second Russian A-50 military spy plane in as many months. The plane was hit over 200 kilometers from the front line and crashed inside the Russian territory. Emergency services reportedly found plane fragments in Kanevskoy district. Russia has not commented on the claim. The video shared online shows the moment the plane appears to be shot down mid-air. The video also shows huge flames of and dark smoke rising after the crash. Ukraine last claimed to have shot down an A-50 on January 14. Losing a second such plane in a matter of weeks does come as a blow for the Russian Air Force. The Russian forces now only have seven such aircrafts. Russian drones attacked Ukraine's Odessa, killing one and injuring three people. Odessa governor said the body of a man has been recovered from under the rubble by the rescue officials and the injured have been taken to hospital. The bombardment comes at a time when the war between Russia and Ukraine has entered the third year. The Russian forces have intensified their armed offensive on Ukraine, including attacks on the grain infrastructure in recent months, after Moscow pulled out of the Black Sea Grain Initiative, a deal that enabled Ukraine's exports to reach many countries facing the threat of hunger. Italy's Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni arrives in Kyiv by train to show solidarity with Ukraine on the second anniversary of Russian invasion, which has cost tens of thousands of lives and ravaged the war-torn nation's economy. Meloni travelled with the Prime Ministers of Canada and Belgium, Justin Trudeau and Alexander the Crew and the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, on an overnight train from neighbouring Poland. Now, the presence of pro-Western leaders was designed to underline the West's commitment to helping Ukraine amid shortages of military supplies. Both Meloni and Trudeau are expected to sign security pacts with President Vladimir Zelensky after recently inking pacts with France and Germany worth billions of dollars. Hungary has deepened military cooperation with Sweden, with Prime Ministers of both countries concluding a de defence industry agreement that will expand Budapest's fleet of Swedish-built fighter jets. Now, this will pave the way for Hungary's likely ratification of Sweden's long-delayed NATO bid. Hungary signed a, four, a deal to buy four Saab Jazz Krippen fighter jets from Sweden as Budapest finally prepared to approve Stockholm's bid to join NATO after nearly two years of delays. The defence agreement appeared to be a decisive point of reconciliation between the two governments. Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban said, that his party is ready to approve Sweden's bid on Monday. Meeting with the Swedish Prime Minister, Orban said that they had closed a long process of rebuilding trust in each other, which he said had recently been dampened. Hundreds of residents took to the streets of Berlin to protest against the government's decision to provide arms to Ukraine after the country's lawmakers passed a new bill to continue with the arms supply to the war-torn nation. Protesters gathered in front of the German parliament for a candlelight vigil, urging the government to halt its weapon supply to Ukraine and called for promotion of the peace process. 
Now, since Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Germany and nations of the European Union have been impacted by the spillovers from the conflict. <clears throat> Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced his proposed plan for post-war Gaza and the international community seems to be in disfavor. As per the plan, Israel seeks open-ended control over security and civilian affairs in the Gaza Strip. The proposal was rejected by Palestinian leaders on Friday and also runs counter to the US post-war vision for Gaza. Now while rejecting the plan, Hamas official Osama Hamdan said that it seeks to fragment the Palestinian land. He urged the international community to press for a peace deal and added that Palestinians should be given control of their own destiny. Now on Friday, US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has again opposed the Israeli reoccupation of the Gaza Strip. He maintained the country's stance against the shrinking of the Palestinian territory. The United States has warned of an environmental disaster in the Red Sea. A UK-owned cargo ship struck by a Houthi missile in the Red Sea is partially submerged but still afloat. The Iran-backed Yemeni rebels attacked the MV Rubimar on February 18. The US Central Command operating in West Asia says the attack caused an 18-mile oil slick. The vessel was also carrying over 41,000 tons of fertilizer when it was attacked. The US military says the fertilizers could spill into the Red Sea and worsen what it has called an environmental disaster. The attack on Ruby Mar could prove to be one of the most serious and damaging to date. The Houthis have been targeting ships in the Red Sea since the October 7th attacks on Israel. They call it a campaign to pressure Israel to stop the war in Gaza. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump has shown support over the availability of in vitro fertilization on Friday. This came in the wake of a controversial Alabama court ruling. Last week, the court said, Frozen embryos have the same rights as children and people can be held liable for destroying them. Following the court orders, many clinics suspended the treatment. The move has deepened concerns among Republicans over abortion and reproductive services. The United States has been embroiled in the abortion row for a while now in 2022, overturning the 1973 Roe v. Wade decision, the country's top court ruled against legalized abortion. Meanwhile, the former US President Donald Trump is leading the Republican race in South Carolina. The state will vote in Republican primaries in a few hours from now. Trump's main rival, Nikki Haley, who is a former governor of state, is trailing with a margin in the surveys. But none of this has stopped the rivals from pulling their punches. Trump has held several rallies in the state. But much of his campaigning has been done from courtrooms in New York, Washington DC and Florida, where he faces a series of criminal prosecutions. Haley, meanwhile, could suffer an embarrassing loss if she cannot win the state where she was the governor. Haley and her allies have outspent Trump in advertising, spending nearly $15 million ahead of the South Carolina primary compared with the $1.3 million rather, spent on his behalf. An unexploded war World War II bomb was safely transported through empty streets 
of the port of city of Plymouth in England. This is being seen as one of the largest evacuations in the United Kingdom since the war. A military convoy carried the Nazi era explosive from a residential area to the shore. Now, after transporting the explosive, 10,000 residents returned their homes. Plymouth, a famous naval port about 240 miles southwest of London, was targeted by Germany during World War II in 1940 and in 1941. More than 2,500 high explosive bombs were dropped on the city during the war, with many missing their intended target and falling on residential areas. Amid reports of a U.S. police officer not facing any criminal charge in the death of an Indian student whose name was Janvi Kandula, the Indian embassy in Seattle wrote on social media platform X that they have raised the matter strongly with local authorities, including the Seattle police, for appropriate redress. The case has now been referred to Seattle City Attorney's Office for, re for review. The young Indian student from Andhra Pradesh was crossing a street in Seattle in January this year when the incident unfurled. 23-year-old John B. Kandula was struck and killed by Officer Kevin Dave's patrol vehicle as she crossed a street in Seattle on January 23rd. Meanwhile, in India, thousands of agitating farmers will keep their march to Delhi suspended till February 29th. One farmer has died in clashes with the Haryana police, shifting the focus of the protests. The farmers will hold a candlelight vigil in light of the events today at two border points between Punjab and Haryana. Following the deaths earlier this week, the farmers initially suspended their march for two days. They began their march earlier this month, demanding a legal guarantee on the minimum support price. The protesters were, however, stopped at the Punjab-Haryana border, where they have been camping ever since. India has sent sacred relics of Lord Buddha and his disciples to Thailand. These holy relics are currently placed in Bangkok's Sanam Luang Royal Ground, which is one of the most historic centres of the nation. The move is being seen as an initiative to strengthen ties with Thailand. The relics, revered by Buddhist followers around the world, were ferried in a special Indian Air Force plane. A colourful procession featuring participants in traditional Thai attire marched towards the shrine to honour these relics. The holy artefacts will be featured across multiple venues in Thailand with opportunities for visitors to pay respects starting Makabucha Day on February 24th, which signifies an occasion of Lord Buddha leading teachings for his disciples. The relics are also set to return to India on the 19th of March. Taiwanese chip giant TSMC's first semiconductor plant in Japan officially opened today, highlighting its ongoing global expansion as well as Japan's big comeback push in the chip sector. Earlier this month, TSMC announced a second plant in Japan, expected to start production in about three years. Private sector investment totals $20 billion for both plants. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida sent a regulatory message, a congratulatory message rather, and called it a major step forward. TM TSMC is building its second plant in the United States and has announced a plan for its first in Europe. 
Now closer to Taiwan geographically, Japan is an important ally of the United States. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met with German diplomat Jens Plotner in Beijing on Friday. China's top diplomat Yi told that this year marks the 10th anniversary of the establishment of the China-Germany strategic partnership. Wang further said that the, both the sides should stay committed to promoting practical cooperation. Plotner said that Berlin hopes to expand cooperation with Beijing further in various fields and make new contributions to addressing climate change and promoting world peace and development. Aerial footage from drones captured the heightened activity of Mexico's Popocatepetl West volcano as it emitted a dense plume of ash and gas. The volcano reactivated earlier in the week, prompting authorities to issue a yellow alert in the surrounding area. The National Center for Disaster Prevention is monitoring the volcano. Authorities are using a traffic light to explain the level of danger from the volcano's increasing activity. Residents remained cautious but calm in response to the alert. The Popocatepetl volcano is situated approximately 45 miles southeast of Mexico City. It is surrounded by an estimated 25 million people living within a 60-mile radius of the composite volcano. In some business news now, oil prices fell nearly 3% lower and posted a weekly decline after a US central bank policymaker indicated interest rate cuts could be delayed by at least two months. Brent crude futures settled down above $81 per barrel. For the week, Brent declined about 2% and US oil fell more than 3%. However, Indications of healthy fuel demand and supply concerns could revive prices in the coming days. China's new home prices slowed their month-on-month -month declines in January, with the biggest cities seeing some stabilization. But the nationwide downward trend persisted, despite Beijing's efforts to revive the demand. New home prices fell 0.3% month-on-month in January after dipping 0.4% in December. The data is significant because China has been ramping up measures to arrest a property downturn, including ordering state banks to boost lending to residential projects under a whitelist mechanism. More big cities, including Shanghai, have also eased purchase curbs to lure home buyers but consumer confidence remains low due to the state of the economy.